So I remember um, we had talked about this new paddle you got. Can you, you hold it up the Shaka Pu'u, right? Yeah, let me give you one thing. Okay. Yeah. So Shaka Pu'u. Yeah, this is a, um, this one's named the, uh, to honor Mel, um, Audie McCall, for, for helping us so much with uh, the design to check off on this thing. Um, because I live in Oregon, uh, on flat water, um, I don't have any way of really testing my product. So what we, and usually how, what we do in our shop, um, how we develop a product is we get an idea, we talk to the guys, they tell me things and then I, my job is to interpret what they're saying. Um, I'll build paddles uh, um, and maybe sometimes tool them. I send them out to the guys and they tell me which ones they like. Um, right off the start when Mel got this one, I mean, he was calling back like the next day, holy smokes, this one's a good one, I like it. And so what we did is we continued to test it because we have to, we have to make sure it's durable. You know, we don't like our stuff to snap, you know. Uh, like I say, I don't like to have a disclaimer on my product. So we usually test for about a year. Um, one time out in the surf is not going to tell you anything about durability. That's, that's really something that's only over time you get to learn. We do have stuff that we do in-house where we um, break the stuff. We call it, the, uh, some of us, the, the Boeing wing test. Um, you know, I watched on uh, Discovery Channel one time, I saw them breaking a wing on a 747. And that's where we developed the, that test from. Um, Theirs is little, uh, not little, much more sophisticated than our method. Um, but basically, we just hang a whole bunch of weight off the end of the paddle and, and see where it snaps. And because I've been doing this a long time, I have a lot of data on um, how much weight a paddle should be able to suspend, which I won't give you because I'll let the other paddle makers figure out how much weight is enough to put on a paddle. But, uh, so you guys are actually pretty high tech then? High tech in a <laughs> low tech way. Uh, you know, paddle making, this isn't big business, you know, it's not like we're, um, you know, making computers that everybody in the world has to have. We have a very small niche market. So, um, numbers are small. Uh, even though people say status surf is exploding, it's, it's not like some of the other types of things, you know. Um, so, yeah, we try to be as sophisticated as we can. Um, you know, we understand also there's a lot of error involved in what we do. How, how do you think that this stand-up surf industry is comparing to the um, OC1, one-man canoe industry? I think it has a broader application. I think the surf culture is uh, something more people know about and uh, somewhat gravitate to. I think um, there's a lot of uh, ex-surfers on the mainland in landlocked places like Iowa who have a beautiful body of water on a lake. and uh, Stand-up might be a great way to reconnect with their surfing roots. Maybe even train a little bit for that trip they, they make to Hawaii once a year. And um, I think it's a good thing. So what is the difference between this Shaka Pu'u and then your other paddle blades and maybe whatever you know other people are using and so on? Well, I'll just give an example. I'll, I'll just take a, a fire most popular paddle. This is a Nalu. No, okay. By the way, it's named after my dog. Golden Retriever. <laughs> uh, no longer have that dog, but... Uh, that's, that's how you get a paddle named after you. Uh, um, this paddle, it has it's slightly <laughs> larger in surface area. Um, probably about, I think it's like a, about 108 square inches. Uh, this is 100 square inches. Um, those four square inches, don't, the eight square inches don't seem like much, but a lot of it just has to do with this paddle. The paddle's bigger. It just, it's a little bit it's wider at the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's nine and a quarter inches wide. Um, this paddle is eight and five eighths, and the, the reason this paddle paddles bigger, mainly, um, even though it is only eight square inches bigger, is because it's more compressed. The paddle is shorter, it's sixteen and a half inches. This paddle, shock pool, is eighteen. So the, the distribution of the square inches is in a longer paddle. So what happens in a paddling stroke is, you know, people think you completely immerse the paddle, and then you pull on the paddle. That's not actually what happens. The stroke is actually kind of a, takes kind of a pendulum arc through the water somewhat. And so the first initial pulls that most people do on their catch is with the tip of the paddle. So with the with a Nalo, you're going to feel a lot more grab initially in the front uh, because it's just bigger down there. Um, and the, But uh, Mel felt that the... Um, and something I discovered when I when I went down to watch the guys paddle um, in Makaha was the paddle the bigger paddles were actually pulling them forward. They were having to bend over at the waist quite a bit because they, were, they just um, it looked like they were fighting for traction on the board. So that's why we went with a little downsized paddle. Um, 
you know, we still offer the, the Nalu because there are some people who prefer a larger paddle. Um, some of that can be attributed to maybe physical size of the people, um, you know, fitness, strength, um, and some of it's paddling technique. If you got crappy paddling technique, then a blade that's really big is going to be beneficial to you because maybe like in paddle, in outrigger we call it like maybe you're whiffing your catch, you're not getting um, good purchase on the water, um, so that paddle may be perfectly adequate for you. Where a guy with really good technique, the paddle would overwhelm him. But we're finding that this this smaller size paddle um, is is probably better for the average guy. I think surfers are probably going to have a good feel for the water, even though they aren't used to having the, um, using the, the paddle. It's kind of like a swimmer coming over. They just, they just know how to manipulate their hands and their forearms to get the best grab. They're not trying to leak the water off. Also, I think most surfers come in with um, the proper muscles to um, be good paddlers, which is the big lap muscles. So um, I think that's why we're seeing a trend towards the smaller paddle. How are you finding that the uh, shakapu'u versus this nalu is on your shoulders? Um, like probably a lot easier. Problems. You know, um, Large surface area and a paddle that's overwhelming you is certainly good. You're going to feel it in your um, in your shoulders, your tendons. Yeah, I'm not a uh, was it a physiologist? Uh, um, you know, wherever wherever the, those problems are occurring, um, you know, all you're creating with a paddle is friction in the water. You know, there's no real magic to the whole thing. You got too much friction. Um, it it all it does is it, it just starts jerking the human around. In fact, you know, philosophically, one of the things we try to do with our paddles are. Um, you know, people always want to talk about the performance of a paddle. Oh, does this thing make you faster? Does this thing, you know, really first thing is you can't really collect data. Um, we've tried to in the past, but we can't get clear data because um, getting a human to perform repeated, um, you know, pieces, you know, um, timed pieces to get that data is really hard because there's a fatigue factor. If you come back the next day, the water conditions changed. Um, also things like, you know, what the guy had for lunch or, you know, who knows what else, how much sleep you got, really affect that kind of timed piece. So really what it's come down to is it's feel. And um, like now, I've never had one of my racers tell me, oh, this paddle makes me faster. They always tell me, this one feels better. I don't know why, but this one feels better. That made me start to think, you know, really what my job is, is to make the, the athlete comfortable. You know, it's, it's an uh, endurance sport. Um, the best pair of shoes you have when you're running is the one that doesn't give you blisters. And so that's what we've tried to do. That's why our shafts aren't super, super stiff. Because we found that the guys, they really start to gravitate towards more flexible types of things, which is easier on their body. Um, this is my own, just my own personal philosophy. And you know, it could be totally wrong. I mean, you know, I really acknowledge that all the other paddle makers have a right to what they believe. You know, and it, really the person, you know, um, if you kind of believe what I'm saying and you kind of go along with that train of thought, then we're probably a real good paddle for you. So what